Hello, uh, I'm John Bolly. I'm CEO of FutureView Systems, and we're here with an, I'm here with Brian McGrath, my colleague, and uh, we're here to talk about topics that are near and dear to the hearts of all finance people. And today, our topic is finance KPIs. Um, so, uh, why don't I start, Brian? Uh, um, I have a question. I hear the KPI acronym thrown around all the time. What do you think a KPI is? You know, I think. I mean, there's a technical definition, which I won't get into. I think the most important part of the KPI is the, is the first letter. It's key, right? So yeah. when I think of KPIs, I think of what are the, the, the dials and the, and the trends and the inputs that the business is managing and using to make decisions off of. And those are the most important things that should be tracked and should be built uh, in a way that they're robust and you really are able to drill down and understand the behavior, not just the output. Makes the behavior that's driving it, not just the output of what the metric is. So right. I think, you know, every business, there, there's certainly commonality across business types and business models. But I think when you look at a business and are trying to figure mm -hmm. out what the key performance indicators of that business are, you have to take the business as, a, as an individual unit and look at it and say, if we want to optimize performance of this business mm -hmm. over time, what are the things that we need to know that will help us make better decisions right. and keep it as concise as possible. I always, I always hear, I've, I've heard CEOs, not always, but a lot of times they'll, they'll include revenue as a KPI. And I've always kind of thought, I can't imagine a business that didn't have, I'm sure there are some, but that didn't have revenue as a KPI. So it yeah. kind of seemed like a default type thing to me. I, you know, they had to be a little more than that. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, with KPIs, I think you want to get as close to the decision and the input as possible. Mm -hmm. Um, I think of revenue as an output. It's right, the result right. of a lot of different things, and it's a measurement that should be tracked over time. It's an indicator of performance, but it's not something that you influence by tracking revenue. Right, right. You, you, you look at the inputs that generate revenue, and those are the things that I think of as KPIs. Yeah. Like, would you say gross margin? percentage of gross margin, you know, is a, is a KPI? I think, I mean, you know, I don't, I don't think there's necessarily a binary of something isn't or is or isn't a KPI. Yeah. I think it, I think, you know, um, gross margin similar to revenue is a measure of the health of the business. I mm -hmm. think when you're looking at the assessing and analyzing a business, it's important to look at things that could be purely defined as KPIs in terms of metrics and, and inputs and, and trends on the things that generate outcomes. And I right. think it's also helpful to look at things that are outcomes. Again, gross margin similar to revenue is, it's an output of all of the decisions that you make that got you to that point. It's important to track it, you know, for particularly for certain types of businesses. But um, I, I don't know if I would personally call that a a, a key performance indicator. It's a key yeah. measurement of the health of the business after the fact. And, the, and I think it's important to think about margin and revenue in the context of planning and forecasting yeah. and measuring the health of a business over time. But I don't know, you know, uh, I don't know if gross margin is really a, a key performance <laughs> indicator. It, it seems like to me it, it marries two things. I, I was thinking about this because I have one, I have one, uh, company uh, that we work with and like they use gross margin as a benchmark to whether they're going to do it. We'll get this gross margin. Mm -hmm. But I always think it's, it's really two different discussions going on. One discussion is how much can I charge, mm -hmm. which I should maximize. So that's the, the numerator, right? And, and how, how cheaply can I purchase the underlying good, mm -hmm. you know, to, to sell. And so it seemed like two completely different discussions. And when you call it gross margin, the key indicator, you kind of conflate those two things. You know that's what right. I mean? Like you, yeah. So I think about, you know, I, I try to tie as much stuff back to decision making as, mm -hmm. as I can, right? So when, when somebody asks me, you know, should I, should I use this metric, uh, you know, and, and really, you know, drill in and understand this metric? It's like, well, you know, let's take gross margin. If I told you the gross margin went down by 2%, right? Mm -hmm you wouldn't know exactly what to do right. with that information without a whole set of metrics underneath it and analysis underneath it that told you why that metric changed the way it did. So, you know, I, I would tend to look more like more at the 
the drivers of gross margin mm -hmm. as the key performance indicators right. that lead to the output and try to get insight around that, as opposed to saying, you know, it's kind of like when you see budget versus actual analysis and it's like, you know, we, we missed budget because expenses were higher. So yeah. That's the wrong yeah. level of analysis. Yeah, yeah right? it's not it's, really, it doesn't, you know, yeah. It's important, I mean, yeah. you know, but. Maybe. Well, that's where you kind of blend into metrics. Like, so I would want to know what's my average selling price per unit, and mm -hmm. I would want to know what's my average cost per unit, and then Inventory I put those together, and, and yeah, 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 that kind of thing. So that makes, makes sense, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so how many KPI, if you think of, if I, you know, we, we used to call this, uh, you and I used to call this an analytical framework. You mm -hmm. know, every business has kind of an analytical framework. Yep. Now, some companies take this to like ridiculous extremes where right. you have so many KPIs that they, they sort of become meaningless. Not meaningless, but there's mm -hmm. just too many of them. What, and what's it's your sense for how many, how many, yeah, how many, what do you think are that? How many metrics or key KPIs do you think a business needs to focus on primarily? Yeah, I mean, I don't think there's a number. I think you, you have to look at your business and understand what drives mm -hmm. performance in your business. And, you know, the, the litmus test for me is if I gave you perfect information about this thing, mm -hmm. what decision would you make different tomorrow? Yeah. yeah. And if you can't answer that question pretty cleanly, yeah. it's probably not worth spending and or that the output of that decision would materially change the, the, the business going forward. Great. It's probably not worth investing a lot of time building out a framework around that information. There's there's a lot of stuff. I mean, I, I see this all the time. I'm, I fall victim to it. There's a lot of stuff that people want to know because they're interested in it. Yeah. And yeah. but they're not actually going to do anything different with it. And sometimes yeah. you don't know that until you get, you know, till you get down the path a little bit yeah. and, and you start looking at it. You think it's interesting. You think there might be some some gold to be mined from that. But until you actually look at it, you realize I don't necessarily know what I'm going to do different as a result of this. And to me, you know, it's worth, if you think that you might make a decision off of something, I would err on the side of looking at it, right, and doing some analysis to build it out. But as soon as you get to the point where you don't know whether you're going to make a decision off of it, stop investing in it. I think that's a really good point because I think uh, one of the things that, I see a lot of people who think that they just need all this information. Yeah. And the reality is, they're not going to use it, you know, and we've done that. How many times have we spent hours and hours mm -hmm. pulling together huge data sets of things all to realize they don't really tell us anything that we didn't already either know or, yeah. or anything that's going to make us do anything different. And in fact, a lot of, I would guess a lot of that gathering is meant to prove to somebody else mm -hmm. <laughs> that what you were going to do was the, the thing you wanted to do. So, yeah. yeah, it's interesting. You know, I've, I've in, in my career, um, owned the you know 30 40 tab spreadsheet mm -hmm. that had all the information that you might ever want right about a business um, and I've also been fortunate enough to have the tools where we stored that information to be able to see who looked at it yeah yeah and I've seen a direct correlation with er, an inverse correlation with the size and amount of data and the regularity with which people look at it yeah. If you're just dumping a bunch of data out there that is all interesting and is all useful on a standalone basis, but doesn't tell a concise and cohesive story so that the people who are looking at it know what to do with that information when they look at it relatively quickly, mm -hmm. you're going to lose eyeballs. Yeah. And yeah. That, that's a sign. If, you know, if you're sending stuff out or if you're saving, you know, you're putting together dashboards and reports that don't get used, yeah. it's a sign that there's something lo getting lost, right? You're, you've got too much information or you're tracking the wrong things you're, or... You're overwhelming yourself with too many... Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, you know what? It made me think of uh, in, in the movie Moneyball or the book, you know, like they have all these... Uh, I mean, he, he shows computer screens with all these different metrics mm -hmm. and there's almost an infinite number of things you can track in, sure. in baseball. But he said, what is the key thing? How many runs do you need to score? And then you work backwards. So it kind of mm -hmm. says you got to have some kind of a framework for these metrics. They got to yeah. come together to something that is the critical thing, which Right. Yeah. What's your goal, right? If your yeah. goal is maximize cash production of the business, your framework is going to be different than if your goal is grow revenue. Right? Well, net income would you would think I always think net income is a very tiny difference between two really big numbers, right? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. But it's funny nobody ever wants to 
it seems like nobody wants to really focus on net income. Net income gets, uh, you know. Yeah, I mean, I think it depends, uh, like, like all answers, right? It depends on the context of the situation that you're in. If you're a utility business, you know, yeah. earnings matter, right? If you're a, a venture-backed SaaS company that is um, trying to grow at 50 to 100%, you're investing ahead of growth. You're going to lose money. Net income is less important. I think this is why the accounting space and the SEC and everybody have always struggled with these quote non-GAAP metrics, you mm -hmm. know, because uh, nobody, everybody's looking for the metric. And, and I think this is an important thing because you've got to, you want to have, you can either have a metric that tells you what decisions to make and how to operate your business, or you can create a metric that helps you present your business. Mm -hmm. And those are those can be two different things, right? Uh, well, know. they can be. And I mean, you know, SaaS, I think, is particularly um, uh, illustrative of, of this dynamic because the financials are very hard, are, are not a very good tool to assess the performance of the underlying business right. with SaaS. You're, you're investing so far ahead of uh, revenue and you know certain type more and more expenses right um, yeah. that it's without those non-gap measures it's really hard with SaaS with a SaaS business to understand the health of the actual underlying business which is where metrics come into to really tell that story but they're also critical to manage the business all right I want to come back to that because uh, I I know you and I've had a lot of good discussions about yeah. all the ways you can calculate lifetime value and uh, we we'll probably but, do a whole whole discussion on SAS metrics but the other thing that that I think is um, worth talking about with key metrics is is how do you determine the timing with which you need them I, I, how many times have you had someone say I need these real time mm -hmm. uh, which I'm pretty much convinced that people need very little real time unless it's a yeah. price of a stock you Again, really I need. think, you know, all of this stuff goes back to what, if I gave it to you daily, mm -hmm. what information or what decision would you make every day with that information, right? Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. I want to look at headcount by day, right? Yeah. Okay. Is it possible? Yes. Does it require an investment of time and resources in order to get there? Does it require a change in process? Yes. Um, is it, is it something we should do? Yeah. How does it help the business, yeah. right? How does yeah. it how does it um, optimize the the decision that you're going to make tomorrow if I hand you that information, right? Right. Um, I think that's I think that's right. I think you got to focus on the what is it? What decision are you really trying to make? Mm -hmm. And you don't need to have information. Co there's a cost to getting information, yeah. right? If I want to calculate yeah. something every day, there's a cost to that. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that I'm matching the amount I spend to get that information with the frequency with which I'm going to use that information mm -hmm. to make decisions. And like you said, if I'm making decisions on, you know, if, you know, I've often heard this, like, um, you know, who was it? Cisco, I think a long time ago, they said, we can effectively close the books every day. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I don't know what I would do with that. <laughs> if I had. It's almost, it almost feels like more of a burden to yeah, receive the information yeah, than just it does. Don't send it to me. Yeah. I don't need to know every day. I need to, uh, um, anyway, that's it's kind of like looking at your 401k every day. It's like, just, yeah, yeah. You're going to, you know, you're going to drive yourself yeah. in, in, insane. I think so. Yeah. Um, okay. So a good discussion. I think, uh, I think takeaways for me are one, you know, every business has its own set of sort of key metrics and you want to define those key metrics that lead to real decisions that the company needs to make. The amount of time, you, you, you know, the frequency with which you generate those metrics uh, depends upon how frequently you'll use them for decision making. Yeah. So, yeah. Makes sense. All right. Well, hey, thank you uh, very much. Uh, and uh, always a pleasure, John. If you're looking to rapidly transform your finance function, visit us at futureviewsystems.com.